This is the Discovery Files podcast from the U.S. National Science Foundation. As weather events become more extreme, people and policy have to adapt in order to build resilience as we face climate change. Our guest today is William Anderich, director of the Wilkes Center for Climate Science and Policy and associate professor in the School of Biological Sciences at the University of Utah. His work seeks to understand forest ecosystems and communicate their sensitivity, vulnerability, and resilience. He is a 2023 recipient of the Alan T. Waterman Award, the nation's highest honor for early career scientists and engineers. Professor Anderig, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to start off by asking about what caught spark in your imagination to bring you where you are today. How did you become interested in ecology? I've always loved spending time outdoors, and I grew up in in Colorado uh, hiking in in the Rockies and spending time with family camping and fishing. And I think that it was that passion for being outside and and seeing how the natural world works. And then also as an undergraduate, uh, I spent a summer helping a PhD student in Yellowstone National Park studying salamanders and salamander genetics. And it was really incredible to come to terms with the the sky's the limit for things that you can study and that it was really about trying to understand how the world works, you know, rather than a specific class or goal or, or, uh, you know, kind of concrete deliverable. And I, I really... It was an amazing experience to to be thrown into the deep end of this is the edge of knowledge and what we know. And there's a lot that we don't know that we get to have the amazing job of trying to figure out. And then also when I uh, came back to Colorado as I was starting my PhD research, I started to see that a huge number of the forests that I had grown up in had died and were just these skeletal landscapes, they're, they're moonscapes. And that really, I think, uh, set my curiosity and, and picked the path that I took for my career because I started wondering, why are these forests dying? What's going on here? Is this climate change? And what does this mean for the future? What work are you currently doing at the Wilkes Center? The Wilkes Center for Climate Science and Policy is a uh, new center at the University of Utah that really aims to provide cutting edge science into the hands of decision makers. and. We think there's a huge potential to unlock innovation and unlock uh, science-based solutions in this climate space. We're just getting started, and I I think there's a really um, exciting number of years to come. And where does the policy portion come in? We are very much focused on climate solutions that scale and that have impact. Policy is a really key piece of that. Obviously, as a collective challenge to tackle climate change, we need uh, policy at many scales of of governance and government uh, to really come up with effective climate solutions. Solutions are also somewhat broader than policy, too. We might think about community-based solutions. We might think about corporate solutions and how to partner with the private sector as well to accelerate the technologies and accelerate the changes that need to happen to tackle climate change. What impacts are you hoping to make with this work? At the largest scale, I hope our work can really contribute to solutions to climate change and how we uh, chart a prosperous, sustainable, and equitable future in the U.S. and around the globe. Forests do a huge amount for for us as humans. They slow the speed of climate change. They provide clean air and clean water. I really hope that our research can help guide decision makers and and um, and you know communities and people around the world into making science based decisions and and charting a sustainable future. I think at a practical, concrete sense, we really hope that our research can provide some of the tools to make these decisions as well. You mentioned tackling climate change earlier. What are you learning about changes happening in forest ecosystems? In my current research, I really want to understand what is the future of Earth's forests in a rapidly changing climate. Earth's forests are perched on this knife edge between two opposing sets of forces. On one hand, the benefits of rising carbon dioxide in the atmosphere tends to help plants and let them photosynthesize and grow more. 
But on the other hand, the stresses of climate change, temperature, drought, wildfires, pests and pathogens, and other disturbances damage and, and kill plants. And it's this tug of war between these two forces, when and where the benefits of CO2 override the stresses of climate change is a fundamental unknown, and it, it really is likely to determine the future of Earth's forests and all that they do for humanity, and even really the, the speed of climate change itself. How should we think about supporting ecosystems as climate change occurs? I think first and foremost, we need to be planning for a future where climate change is going to have huge impacts and really shape ecological communities and shape Earth's forests. This really means that we ought to be thinking about what are the key pieces of plant physiology and of ecological dynamics that are going to help us predict the future or forecast what, um, what forests might look like. But also, I think we need to be thinking proactively and planning for how can we build climate resilient forests? What are the species that are most likely to thrive, the genotypes that are most likely to thrive, the different combinations and diversity of species in a community? All of these pieces really can help us plan for the future and, and really manage for climate resilience in coming decades. I saw a mention of game theory in your work, and I'm wondering what role does game theory play in ecology? And I suppose we should add, what is game theory for people that don't know? Yeah, um, game theory is a really borrowing a set of tools uh, from economics and from social sciences on how plants might make decisions uh, in a, a variable environment and uh, in the presence of other actors or agents, or in this case, organisms, plants in a system. And... Uh, we use it to start to think about how should plants decide uh, how open their pores on their leaves should be for how much CO2 they should take up and at a cost of actually losing water and potentially drying out. Uh, and we also use it to think about, you know, what sorts of investments should plants make with the carbon that they then have fixed? How should they grow more leaves or more roots and what sorts of decisions though it's not really decisions in a, um, a neurological sense, but plants still have to make decisions about how to respond to the environment. And we use game theory frameworks to think about, you know, what is likely to maximize their survival and their evolutionary fitness. Earlier this year, you received the Alan T. Waterman Award. What was it like getting that call? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was it was uh, surreal. I, I mean, it didn't, it didn't quite feel... Uh, like it was like it was real life. I, when the call came in and I, I heard the news, I actually had to sit down for a moment and you know take a few deep breaths. I, I think it is just kind of floored me. Did you have to call the family after? I did, and and actually the first thing I did uh, was call um, a number or or email a number of my mentors, uh, and and I wanted to share that news with them because they have played such a huge role in my career and in where I am today. What kind of reactions did your mentors have? They were incredibly thrilled. Uh, several of them yelled loudly on the phone. One of them told me that it, it made his month to hear the news and I, it was very touching. I made more than my month, it made my year. And I, you know, I feel incredibly fortunate to have had so many wonderful mentors many of whom have, are incredibly busy folks, but still always took the time to meet, to guide, um, even to nominate me for the award. I took the time out of very, very busy schedules and kind and generous people. And it's also really important to me then to, to pay that forward to the next generation and to make sure and try to be the best mentor that I can be to the next generation of young scientists. With the financial support from NSF that comes with the Alan T. Waterman Award, what are you hoping to achieve? I think it really unlocks this ability for us to tackle some high risk, but potentially very, very exciting and transformative questions. We, we'd really like to scale up and have our science useful for, for making decisions around forests as potentially helpful solutions to climate change and when and where can forests be leveraged to slow climate change. 
And I think the the Waterman really lets us think of and, and really now go undertake some high risk experiments across many sites, uh, this types of, of modeling and infrastructure that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. NSF support is, has been absolutely fundamental for our work to date, that our work on the basics, the, the fundamentals of how plants respond to their environment really would, would not be possible without NSF support. It's funded us to work in, in different systems and tackle very critical pieces of how plants respond and how that scales up to whole forests and whole ecosystems. Finally, are you feeling optimistic about people's abilities to rise to the challenges we're facing around climate change? <laughs> it does depend a little bit on, on the day and the week, but I, I would say in general, I'm a pretty optimistic person. And I, I ultimately, I think we will rise to the challenge of tackling climate change. I think that Already, there's evidence that there are enough pieces, policies, and technology in place that climate scientists no longer think as much about the very high emissions, worst case scenarios uh, as we did a decade or two ago. That's already progress, and I, I think there's still a lot more to be done. I think it's, um, it's really going to come from bringing everyone's ideas and passion to the table, no matter what sector, what country, what age group. We all share this, this atmosphere and this planet, and we all have a stake in its sustainable and prosperous future. I think we're making a lot of progress, but there's still a lot to go. I'm really most optimistic when I get to interact with students in my, my role as a teacher and a mentor, because I, the enthusiasm, the passion, the dedication, the innovation of students, I, it's, it's really amazing and inspiring to me. So that's, that's what I'm most optimistic about the future. Special thanks to William Anderick, Gino Scafidio, and Matt Christensen. For the Discovery Files, I'm Nate Potker. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts, and if you like our program, share with a friend and consider leaving a review. Discover how the U.S. National Science Foundation is advancing research at nsf.gov. <laughs>